Good morning, Fred friends, and it is morning. It is 7.10 in the a.m. on this beautiful Saturday morning. I believe the date is, is it the 20th of November, year of our Lord, 2021. And I'm up early, as I'm always up early. I'm a postman, I'm just used to being up early. So I always like to make a little time in the workshop before I go to work, but Praise be, I'm not working today uh, at Royal Mount. I've got the day off, I've got a Saturday off. That's because I have a meeting, I have a church meeting this morning where we have a gathering of churchmen uh, and friends uh, and we're going for a breakfast. And uh, these are things that I organise, I love organising them. And uh, I'm able to get a day off from Royal Mount and get to do that this morning. So that brings me to this project on the bench and what a gorgeous guitar I have. And this guitar is special to me in as much as it actually belongs to one of my church friends. In fact, one of our worship leaders at Ashwood Church um, this is his guitar and it's a beautiful thing and I am honoured and blessed to be able to work on it and make it tip top and Bristol fashion for him. And there it is, what a beautiful looking thing and it is an Ibanez. Uh, this is special in as much as it's an old Ibanez. It, I believe I've done, been doing some research, I've discovered it is a, it's an RG 470 made in Japan at the uh, Fujigen factory, which as most of you will know, is a very famous factory and a world-renowned builder. But this guitar is special, not just because it belongs to my friend Andy, it's uh, also that it's one of the very best spec RG470s I've ever seen. Now this guitar originally is a 1992 model that was out for a couple of years, uh, decent spec, um, it, it was around for a couple of years now it wasn't as much discontinued as they just stopped uh, making it for, for a short while but they reinvented it in 1998 and this is one of those 1998s and what I love about this is this is the top spec um, in as much as, it, as the Wizard 2 neck as you know is a very famous neck very well renowned and well regarded it does have the edge tremolo I believe an edge 2 the, the great thing about the Edge 2 tremolo is it has a much thicker base plate and it has the angled, almost cheese wedge shaped base plate. I don't know if you can see it from there. Um, a great tremolo in its own right with fabulously thick fine tuners on there. Puts me in mind of the Goto uh, Floyd Rose. Now if you don't know the Goto Floyd Rose, uh, in my mind it is the best Floyd Rose possible. Uh, don't get me wrong, I love the original Charlemagne German Floyd Rose. Um, it was one of my favourite things. I have a couple myself and it is right up there. It's a top spec one But the one I slightly slightly prefer is the one made by Goto, which is under license and the the the, the Craftsmanship the quality the manufacturing of, of that tremolo it is absolutely second to none So I'm a big fan of Goto gear and this puts me in mind of it Look at the thickness and the size of these fine tuners the best of the best uh, Coming back to Goto. We do have Goto machine heads on there so this is the highest spec of the of this uh, the, this incarnation of the RG470 you have a standard V8 bridge and the V7 neck humbuckers and you have the uh, let's have a look just check this one is it the S1 yes the S1 single coil in the middle the switching options you've got a five way I'm not certain of what the five way does but I know that's full humbucker uh, that is in the middle is just the middle pickup and in fifth position it is just full neck So in here this will give you an incarnation of the neck and the middle I think just this coil is on and this one is off So you have single coil single coil like a strat and in the position what I call position two I think this coils off this one's on and this one's on uh, I think that is the way I will have to check a diagram and find out so What is wrong with this guitar? Well, there's not particularly anything wrong with it, but there are things that do need attention. Now, I've already been across the frets with a fret rocker and straight away, this guitar needs a fret level. We have at least 10 frets that are rocking, so we have high spots on the frets. Uh, that is not a surprise to me, uh, never is. It's a 23 year old guitar. In fact, this was made in April 1998, so it makes it 23 and a half years old or that is a spec given all the dates given uh, at the factory which means it was obviously built probably made in about 1997. I wouldn't be surprised if we found that this was a neck from an RG550 because that does happen on some of the earlier models you get a slightly better neck but these necks were used on many of the uh, Ibanez guitars of that era and one thing to note by the way the higher the number on an Ibanez the better 
the guitar. So if you start with an RG250, we get up to a 550, your 550 is going to be getting up there. Uh, so, so this is a 470, so this is a mid to higher range guitar. Putting a price on it back then, I wouldn't be able to do that. I would have thought back then, this would have maybe cost you five or six hundred pounds. Not sure, um, could have been as low as 400. Again, not sure, Andy will know better than I know. Uh, but that said, you can pick these up for, I've been looking, anything between 250 and 450 pounds. Um, one spectra like this, you probably get someone asking five or six hundred. They are not fetching that, people are not buying. I've seen one for 700 pounds on eBay and on Reverb recently. It is not as good as this. It doesn't have the better tremolo. <clears throat> Everything else is spec more or less the same. For insurance purposes, you are not gonna get a better example than this. Um, it's almost flawless which I would expect of Andy. It does not surprise me at all that this guitar is in such fabulous condition. Myself, what would I pay for this? I would not be shy uh, and be disgruntled at paying 700 pounds for something like this. And for insurance purposes, I'd definitely insure this for a thousand pounds myself. That is, that is my gut feeling. That is from the knowledge I've garnered over the few years I've been doing this job. I would value this at around a thousand pounds, certainly for insurance purposes. So what I'm going to do is, we're going to, I'm going to strip it basically and rebuild it. So I'm going to strip it down and rebuild it from from the back up. We do have problems with the controls. The uh, volume pot is not working properly. The higher you turn it, the lower the volume seems to go. It's scratchy, as is the tone. I'm going to get in there with some switch cleaner and clean them up and see if that fixes anything. Some de in fact, I don't use deoxy. I use Service Old Super Ten. I've always used that. If that doesn't fix the problem, I will replace the pots. I do think I have some very similar pots knocking about in my parts drawer, some new old stock Japanese ones as well, which would be perfect for this guitar. Failing that, I will go and purchase some um, new pots, probably get myself some uh, pots from my friend at Six String Supplies. Uh, he stocks at CTS pots, but he has them um, built to his own specification. So we're an SSS pot. So I'll go and see Ed there, see what he's got in line of uh, pickups I'm looking for. He knows I do like a vintage taper, so I would like to go with a lovely, a nice volume sweep and a nice tone sweep if we do change them. I'm going to strip the tremolo, rebuild that from the back up, check everything on that. I'm going to give it a good clean. We're obviously going to get the strings off and the knot off and everything. We are going to set the neck dead straight. We're going to level the frets because the frets are up and down all over. I will show you that um, in more detail. Uh, later on in this video but yeah so we're going to level the frets uh, once they're leveled we're going to be flat top we're going to recrown them uh, we're going to polish them up we're going to treat the fingerboard to some uh, mineral oil which one nourishes the wood and two will get all the grime and sweat and stuff that's accumulated over the years from that so basically uh, a strip and rebuild uh, we'll be restringing it we'll put some 10 foot diodero 1046s on there we'll make sure the tremolo strip and rebuild the tremolo um, so quite an intensive job, we're basically going to give it an intensive setup and we are going to give it the fret level. We'll change the pots if we need to. So it's having a lot of work. I would price a job like this at around, well not around, it'd be exactly £150 plus parts, so plus strings, plus pots if we need to change them. I will not be charging Andy that. Andy gets a mate's rate, I'm not going to tell you what I'm charging him. Uh, but yeah, but this is one I'm really looking forward to doing. It's a fabulous, fabulous looking guitar. Uh, I do love these. Not something I'd go out and buy for myself, you know, like it, it, and where I am right now. I do have some unique and special guitars, and I really do have all the guitars I need. But I would not be, uh, if I was offered one of these at a good price, I would certainly consider buying it. So a great guitar. One I'm very much looking forward to working on. And uh, that is as much as I can really say about it right now. So, uh, back soon.